Hi, um, my name is Louis. I'm a math student and a pro computer programming enthusiast. And I'm also a Google Summer of Code student for um, this summer. And today we'll walk together towards painless method programming, or at least, least painful. So as advertised, the talk is split into two main parts. There's two goals. Um, the first one is to convince everybody that uh, we can do better uh, metaprogramming in C++11 and C++14. And the other one is to um, present the work I've been doing during the, the, the past year, um, which is basically um, um, a, a, pro a proposal for a new template metaprogramming library. But the proposal is incomplete because I've spoken with like very brilliant people here and um, some might be changed, but um, so yeah, the, the second part is like uh, looking at the design of a new template metaprogramming library. So let's go. Um, first of, we'll need some boilerplate uh, for the examples to, uh, to, to compile. So include, um, then the standard, uh, like the, the typical uh, Boolean integral constant setup, um, a simple list. Uh, the const meta function simply uh, appends, uh, prepends an element to the list, so it's uh, it's nothing new. And then tail returns everything in the list set except the, the the first element. Of course, the, the list has to be non-empty. Then head returns the first element in the list. List has to be non-empty too, and is empty. Well, returns obvious. Um, this is equivalent to the current MPL. This, is, uh, this setup is equivalent to an iterator-based setup as in the current MPL, but uh, I think it's simpler. So um, yeah, well, well, it's equivalent if you consider forward iterators, not like random access iterators. But anyway, random access iterators don't really exist in MPL. So, um, so we'll work with that. OK, and now. Let's consider some techniques um, that we can use in C++14 and C++11 to simplify some common, common meta functions. And the first obvious uh, one is mapping a meta function into a, uh, um, a list of types. So the naive implementation, which would be in C++03, and OK, now. Um, I will still use variadic templates when speaking of C++03, because otherwise I would end up with like pages and pages of preprocessor garbage. So uh, like I still use variadic templates, but just think of C++03 as being even worse than the worst. That, 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 that's, that's really it. Like you could have a C++03 implementation of this, but it will be more ugly. So. Um, the naive implementation simply takes the first element in the list and then um, maps maps the, the meta function on the, the rest of the list, on the tail of the list, and then maps and then applies the meta function on the first element and counts that to to the tail. And if I if the list is empty, well obviously you just return the empty list. So that's basic recursive approach. Um, what we will do in C three and basically what's done in the MPL. Um, they don't use add, they use iterators, but it's basically the same thing. And you can have, now with C++11, with variadic vari templates, um, you can vectorize, if I may, <laughs> if I may say so, um, a function application. And uh, well, you, you guys are probably all familiar with this syntax, so um, there's really nothing to explain there. Uh, and let's see how both techniques compare in terms of compiler performance, co compile time performance. So I've run benchmarks, and so yeah, this is the time with um, a Clang 3.5, like compiled from the trunk and everything. Um, so this Clang isn't optimized, so don't really look at the times themselves. It could be a bit like, both curves will be scaled a bit like, uh, it would be translate, translated. Um, a bit like down, but um, still we can see that the, the 
a synthetic, synthetic all behavior uh, is really, really, really better for the, um, for the C++ element. Sure, here? Yep. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. Sorry. Great. So this is for um, the time. And also, as you can see, um, well, it, it's the, the compiler recurs recursive uh, uh, template instantiation deficit um, at something like 256, whereas um, the vectorized version doesn't. So it's it's handy. It's it's possible to unroll to unroll the the naive implementation so that you can you can get pretty far. Um, I think it's even possible to do it. Yeah, there's a way to do it um, such that it, you will never hit the compiler limit by like um, um, splitting by splitting the mapping in two at each time. You can split the list. Uh, into it each time, and then you'll get like log of n depth, so you get the compiler limit. But still, the, the performance is worse. And then that's for the memory usage. So it's basically the same. Event. So clearly, there's a, there's an improvement. Okay, let's look at another function that we might want to implement: logical operations, no short circuiting, uh, because with uh, short circuiting. It, it's basically some kind of right fold, um, of lazy right fold, and we can have some kind of improvement there, but not a great improvement there. So we consider short circuit, uh, non short circuiting logical operations, and they're still a big use case. Um, so the next implementation, C plus plus O three ish. So um, the, 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 the basic temp the, the base template is just returns true, and otherwise you check the first you check the first element in all the values that you were given. If its value is true, well, you just you, you need to, to check whether the rest is true also. And if it's false, well, just return it. So you return false basically. So this is again a naive recursive implementation, and that's about the best you can do in C plus plus three. Oh, okay. Well, this one happens to short circuit, but I'm considering non short circuiting operations, right? Because the next one won't, won't short circuit. Like, the, the, the really, the, the good implementation doesn't, doesn't uh, short circuit. Okay? But if it's, um, if you want to keep short circuiting, this is going to be ish the best implementation you, you can get. Okay, now here's a clever way to do it. Okay. By the way, just I want to clarify stuff. Um, I didn't find all of those techniques. I, I found a couple of them, but most of them. Um, this is Roland Buck on the, on the boost mailing list like a week ago. We went, uh, we came out with this. It's pretty clever. So basically, you get a sequence of types, um, and you just you, you expand the values, the, the value of uh, each of those types, and you check whether the the, the Boolean sequence that contains all of them is equivalent to the Boolean sequence that contains only trues. So all of them are trues. So um, <laughs> that's it. So here, this is the uh, comma operator. I, I'm, I'm basically using the excess value um, as a, really as a tool to be able to repeat true a lot of times. I'm just using the excess to, um, to expand the parameter back. That's it. So the, the, this kind of stuff, uh, you will see a lot in this presentation. And I think you will see a lot in C++ uh, 14. So, so Only trues. But the same number of trues, right? So you're really checking, like, are they, are, are they all trues? And that's what you want. And, and this is why I say you, you're not short circuiting. Because when you expand as here, right, you're not short circuiting. If, if somebody's false, like if the first one is false, you're still expanding everyone. And if X is, um, well, it, it, it might be interesting to have short circuiting. Because if the X's are some kind of hard to compute meta function, uh, it is some kind of hard to compute meta function, then maybe you'd like to uh, short circuit. But that's another story. 
So is everybody okay with this? This expands to. No, okay. Um, sorry, I'll repeat the question. The question is like, how does this expand? This expands to um, parents excess value, comma true, comma parents excess value, comma true, and so on. Excess time, well, size of excess time, right? Okay, but then the comma operator. Uh, I mean, excess value, like the first x value and then the second x value, comma, true. Well, the, yeah. the comma operator, it just returns returns the, the last one, so they're all true. So instead of the comma operator, you could also have logical order. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 exactly. There's, there's a couple of ways, a couple of ways to, to, to do that. Yeah. Um, I thought the, using the comma operator was the clearest because you're really saying, like, discard the first value. The excess. I'm really using it as a tool. I didn't understand. Right. St. Std. Making make make index sequence. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. Because yes, because I've got the, um, because I've got the excess already. I have the parameter back. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Sorry. The comment was, uh, but doing this with like a login operation, while this is um, basically, I, I don't require any more template instantiations, and that's true because I'm taking um, advantage of the fact that I already have the parameter back. Right, but I could also generate it one. So I, for this, I, I use like a st a std uh, make index sequence, and then I just like replace all the ind indices by uh, by by true. So something like that. But yeah, it's possible. Uh, let's see how these compare. Oh, and by the way, there are like four or five very, really interesting implementations of this. Um, they're in the bonus part of the talk if we have the time, right? because it's, it can be long to explain. Um, and but they're, they they give the same performance benefit. They're just interesting to see. So again, we can see that uh, it's uh, the behavior is better with uh, with the non-naive implementation. This is again with 3.5. Um, so the comment is, or well, I'm not sure I understand. Yes, yes, but I'm considering like if you try to have uh, non-short circuiting, okay, a non we want to implement a non-short circuiting logical operation, logical end, okay. In C++ tree, we don't have the choice; we must implement it naively, recursively, and it's going to short short circuit. But say you don't, you don't care about short circuiting, which um, I, I saw a lot of in, in library code. That we don't necessarily need to uh, to short circuit, especially if it's faster just to evaluate everything. Okay, um, so the only way to do it in C++ tree is to short circuit, not in C++ eleven. What do you mean by short? You already have the value. You go back to the. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So the question is, what do you get by short circuiting? Because you already have values. Um, okay. This is true. Actually, if I was in a lazy, and I'll come to that later, but. If I, went, if I was in a lazy um, context where the x's were, I, I expect they were, they were meta functions, there would, there would be like colon, colon type here. Colon, colon type, colon, colon value. Okay? But for simplicity here, I'm just, yeah. You said we already have the values, but you don't already have the values. You get the values when you say colon, colon values. If you don't say colon, colon values, then that could be an unevaluated meta function, right? And mm. that could Okay. But, you would yeah, only, yeah. but since it's metaprogramming, there are no side effects. The only reason you might prefer short circuiting is for performance reasons, compiled by performance. And here he's showing that at least in a lot of cases, performance is just better to evaluate everything. Yeah. Yeah. There is a potential as well as expand it. It's depending on where that is occurring. Instantiating the template, even how. Yeah. 
Yes. Um, so the, the comment is that uh, there is a potential problem with doing this because it depends on what are the x's. Um, maybe instantiating one x will one x will um, will create an error, and that's true. But the whole point of this is that I'm saying if you want to have non-short circuiting logical operations, here it was, here is how to do it. That's what I'm saying. If you want to have short circuiting, then okay, let's go full bar uh, or uh, full bar and true x s. That's it. But then you have you have um, you have worse performance. So, but but that's it. That that's true. Really, that's true. All right. Okay. Um, so memory usage, um, same thing. There's a there's a large gain. Um, oh, okay. It's written logical or and just to um, just to, just to be completely um, complete, this is actually a benchmark of a logical or, but it's implemented exactly in the same way. Okay, it's because it's in the MPL eleven benchmarks. Um, I, I benchmarked logical or instead of logical and, but it's basically the same. Okay, now key-based lookup uh, for implementing type maps, compile time maps. Um, in the following slides, we'll need no DK, which is basically a demi meta function to avoid, um, to avoid, uh, say, say if I want to return a type and use decal type to, 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 to see what's the return type of the, of the function, to get like the result of the meta function. Um, if it's a function type, if it's void, it, there's going to be problems. So we just wrap it with no DK, and then we'll extract the, the type inside the, uh, inside the no DK. And a pair, I'll just need for pattern matching earlier. Um, later on. So, with single inheritance, um, this is the only technique that's possible. Yeah, I think that's the only technique that's possible in C++ tree. Uh, so basically, you have a lot of pairs, and then you just <coughs> take the first pair, create create a static uh, function uh, which will match your key, and um, which gets the key as a parameter and returns the value associated to it, right? And then you hinder it from the rest of the map, and you import the um, the function of the rest of the map, okay? And then what happens is that um, when I want to fetch a key into a set of pairs, um, I just have to take the map and try to, um, yeah. So I have to take the map and then use the, the static meta function, the at key meta function, uh, function, sorry, here to, um, and use overall resolution to, uh, to match the right key, the right value. It, it, it's seriously, it's harder to, to explain in English than it is to read, I, I think. So it, it, is everybody all right with this? This is like the standard implementation. Um, I first encountered that, I think it's in the boost parameter library somewhere. I was like, oh, clever. Okay, so this is the naive implementation. Now, um, less naive implementation and also simpler. So we need a helper, inherit. You give it a lot of types and it just like multiply inherits those types. And basically you just have a function that will associate a pair key value to the value of the pair. And uh, you inherit from all the pairs and then you check, and then you pick, um, and then you, you, you try to convert it to one of the pairs because it hinders from them, and you just look which one matches. So we'll stare at it for a bit. Do everybody get it? Um, do you need like more cl clarification? Go ahead. So here, I'm like I'm saying, okay, this is the key I'm looking for. So this is fixed. Now there's now, now iterit, right? It iterates from a single pair with that key associated to that value. Otherwise, you're breaking the con breaking the contract of the map. And so since this is fixed, um, well, it's going to match for the right pair, and then uh, the, the overall resolution uh, gives you the the value here, and you return it. 
is just a dummy struct, an empty struct. Uh, the question is, what is the declaration for pair? And it's just a dummy struct. Well, pair there, yeah. Just for pattern matching, but uh, not pattern matching, anyway. So, all right. Okay, so this is one way. It's also simpler once you get it. Um, and let's see how it compares. Claim 3.5, again, time. Well, again, it's better. Uh, we don't hit the limit. Great. And yes, I must say, I'm showing Clang 3.5 because the other compilers, okay, I benchmarked Clang 5, Clang 3.4, Apple LLVM uh, 5.1, and GCC 4.9, the experiment, experimental version. Um, all the Clangs and the Apple LLVM behave basically the same. Um, GCC behaves very similarly, but um, the, the, the charts are really ugly because uh, F time report on GCC gives you uh, very little precision. So um, it's, it's less interesting. But um, you can be sure that it's approximately the same gain in most compilers. And you know, other compilers I just don't even try because we're gonna barf. Memory usage, same type of gain. Okay, on to index-based lookup. So are you guys following up to here? We're really just looking at techniques to implement common meta functions and to see like, do C++11 and C++14 really rock with respect to template meta programming? Like, can we, make, can we do better or not? Okay, index-based lookup. So um, say for implementing MPL vector, that will be required. Again, I need the Okay, an index pair, uh, which is basically the same as pair, but it maps, instead of mapping a, a, a type to another type, it maps an index to a type. And I'm sure you can um, see where I'm going. So, naive, and this is, like it's written naive, but actually I should say real world currently, because this is what's in like all the most other um, metaprogramming libraries I see out there. This is like this naive implementation. And it's really bad. It, it, it's really bad. You'll see, the, you'll, you'll see the benchmark, but it's really, really bad. Um, so anyway, I just, this is just like a recursive naive implementation. You decrement the index until you get zero, until, you, until your index is zero, is zero and then once, once you're trying to fetch the, 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 the type at index zero, well, well, it's just the first type, so you return it, okay? Everybody's following? Sorry? Yeah, yes, and um, you'll see later that, <laughs> no. Uh, the question was, um, doesn't the MPL use preprocessor uh, to simplify this thing? Yeah, it does, and vector is actually the worst data structures, but I'm gonna show it later. Um, sadly, because it's advertised as being the most efficient, but it's like parable. Um, so this is, this is, I think it's, this one performs even better than, than the MPL vector. Um, that would be easy to benchmark anyway. Okay, so naive implementation, using overall resolution now. <clears throat> Was, yeah, right, this one, it's Richard Smith from, um, he's working I think now with Chandler, Karuk. Um, this one is really clever, seriously. So, um, okay, I'll just e explain like, but I, I, anyway, um, what we do here is that we create a sequence, okay, we have an index and we have, say, um, n types. And we want to get the, 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 the type at index, uh, index, right? And so we create an, an index sequence of size index, okay? And what we're gonna do with it is hide the first index types, right? Okay, uh, I actually index minus one types here. We're hiding them and then it allows us to match the nth, the nth one that we want here and then we just discard the rest, okay? It, this one is a bit hard to, 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 um, to, uh, to picture, but um, so when I'm, and, and, it, and it works, it works because, because this it works because once you're like in the context of once you're inside the struct here, this is fixed. Like there is nothing to deduce here. This is like I've got 
n minus 1, say my index is n, it's going to simplify. So say my index is n, and I've got a certain number of times, right? Well, I've got n minus 1. I, I've got a parameter pack of length 1. I can do something with it. Well, what I'm going to do is just, is just um, uh, uh, create n minus 1 void star, void star types, right? In there, so and this this um, so this function here is really like void pointer, vo void star, void star, void star, n minus one times, and then odk and star, and then dot dot dot. Okay, what happens when you try to match it with the parameter pack of no decays here? Well, the n minus one no decays are just eaten by the void star. The nth one is there, it matches. And the rest, well, I just don't care. Just go into the ellipses. And so I can match the n, the n uh, uh, parameter, parameter this way, and I just use decal type to, uh, to pull this out. Yep. Mm. Why, actually, no, I'm sorry. Um, I'm doing an off-by-one somewhere. Like, no, the implementation is correct, but when I'm speaking, I'm doing some kind of off-by-one. But I'm sure you kind of get the ID, the ID anyway. So is everybody all right with this one? Or at least, like, get the, the picture? Because I don't have a lot of time to. Uh, what, what you, what's the last argument expanding there? Here? This one? Yeah. This is just an ellipsis. Oh. It's just, and, and it works because these are pointers. So I'm just basically saying, huh, whatever's the rest, I don't care. I'm able to do variations on the theme, and to get like this way, I'm able to get like the, the, the of course, I'm, I'm able to get the, the last element of a parameter pack. I'm also able to get the last minus one, the last minus two, and well, if I want to write those, uh, those overloads, well, I'm able to uh, basically to index from the end. Yes? The comment is, if you, if you were able to implement pubback, uh, I'd be really impressed. Um, do you require your pubback? Uh, do you only want the, the, the like the, yeah, I, can, I, I know, this, this one is hard, okay. Um, do, do you need a value also, which is a type? Because the type of the list would be, okay. Uh, I'll take a note of that, yeah. No, no seriously, this, this one is pretty, uh, I think I've got something somewhere that helps me with this. Because I'm able to slice. I was able to slice at some point. Slice. Yeah. I want to see your implementation. Parameter packs. With, I, I'm slicing with parameter packs, but it's, it's not in this version of, uh, I'll go back in my comments and show you, OK? Um, after the talk, because I don't want to run out, run out of time. OK, so using overall resolution. Anyway, you guys can go back to the slides that are going to be available. Um, and everything, all, all this is implemented in, in the MPL 11. It's benchmarked. It's tested. So just go to uh, the website you'll see at the end and basically MPL 11 detail and then you get a truckload of techniques. Um, still have to understand them though. Okay. And now it's for the time. Um, well, there is an improvement um, here. Sorry about this. Um, so there still is an improvement. Um, here you can see that <coughs> perhaps you can't see, uh, but the, the green one, so the, 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 the overall resolution one, starts a bit above. Well, it's really a bit above. But um, this would be, I suspect this is because of the um, stood make index sequence, which requires some kind of uh, initialization, if, 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 if I may. So, um, but it, it scales much better. Now, memory usage, again, <laughs> again. Uh, the behavior is much better, but as you, as you can see, it starts. This is, I think, this is the. Th this would be the the, ma the stood make index sequence um, initial overhead. Now that's not too bad because um, in a typical meta program, you're likely to do a lot of lookups, and so this cost is amort uh, uh, amortized um, in the long run. 
So that's it. Now, an important one, left folding. And when, when you get the fold, you get a lot. You really do. Um, a lot of algorithms can be implemented in terms of, of uh, left fold and even more uh, lazy right fold, but anyway. Um, so uh, for left folding, um, naive implementation. Um, oh, I'm almost off. Okay, I'm not off though. It's, it's all right, it's stuff just there, so you're not missing anything. Um, so what I do is, well, everybody know, everybody know what's a left fold, right? It's, it's basically folding the MPL, okay? Um, um, so if, if the, the, the sequence I'm folding is empty, well, just return the initial state. If it's not empty, then um, apply the, 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 the meta function to the state and to the first element in the list, and then do this recursively with the tail of the list. Yes? How does Same thing. same thing. Yeah, right fold is different. Left fold is the same thing, and I'm not considering right fold here. Um, so it's, it's exactly the same thing. So this is a recursive, naive implementation of <coughs> of the left fold. Everybody follows. Great. Now, this one I'm pretty glad. <laughs> it's large. It's ugly. I agree, <coughs> but. It has something, something interesting in there. Um, okay, so and this is actually a general technique that can be um, used for more than only folds. For <coughs> any time you have, you, you need some kind of specialization, but you'd like to use aliases. Okay, so first of, got to use those features, right? <laughs> um, so, uh, the reason I'm. The reason I'm trying to use aliases is because um, they're a bit cheaper than full-blown struct. Um, when I, I benchmarked it, and um, the compiler probably has to uh, has to do less work uh, for aliases, so uh, the memory consumption is is a bit better, and also the, 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 there's a, a small timing improvement. So whenever I can, in the in the like deep hacky implementation programming code, I try to use aliases a bit more than struct. But there's a problem with aliases. You can't partially specialize them, so you can't branch. If you only want to use aliases without like any meta function in there uh, that's implemented as a struct, you can never branch. Um, okay, so what I, what I told to myself is like, okay, well, you're going to factor out the branching part of the code into a struct, which is going to be Part, uh, fully specialized on true or false, which is like the result of the, the predicate on which you're branching. And everything else will be implemented in terms of aliases. And I so, okay. <laughs> First of left fold, what I do is um, I use the full, uh, left fold imp, uh, imp helper, and um, size of excess equals zero is just like my parameter pack is empty. This is like the branching condition, okay? And I, I, call, I call this uh, helper result, which is an alias, and which does all the heavy lifting, okay? Now, here, um, <coughs> if the condition is true, so if my parameter pack is empty, right? Whatever you give me, I know it's empty, so I return the state, okay? And if it's not empty, like it, true, false, right? So if it's not empty, well, I do the, the left fold. So I apply the meta function to the state and to the first x, which is right here in the alias, <coughs> okay? And so I apply the meta function to the state and process the rest of the parameter back. And here I do the branching part. So the branching part has been, um, has been factored out into into a struct, but everything else is done into aliases, so it's a bit faster. Um, I don't expect people to do this in their code, <laughs> but it, but it, it's it's important implementation technique when you're trying to implement. Yeah. So okay, let me understand. The win here is you only get two instantiations of the fold impulse struct. Right. Instead of n. Yeah, and the rest are uh, aliases. 
um, the, the, the question slash comment is, so here you only get two um, instantiations of foldable impl uh, instead of n, and the rest are, are aliases. And yeah, that's right. So there's a small gain. And um, also here, I believe there's something that's happening here because it performs pretty well. And it's, it's actually quite naive in, in the sense of um, you're, still, you're still, still recursive and you're still, you know, it's, not, it's, it's nothing fundamental. I'm not using parameter packs uh, to like vectorize anything. Or, um, but I suspect that there's something big happening here, um, whereas this is matched really easily without any, um, like there's no, there's no specialization for this. So it's matched like freely. Uh, and I think it makes a difference. Otherwise, I'm not quite sure where's the difference. It does perform well. And uh, oh yeah, also for completeness, the benchmark I'm gonna show, the, um, I'll just show you. So, oh, but there's another technique. Oh, okay, another technique. And this one is pretty cute also. Um, now, there's a bonus. If you're folding this data, you can use constexpr. And then, and then you can do nasty stuff. So, <laughs> so I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm really just like, I'm, okay, so, so if, if I know what's the fold, if I know like I got like MPL, integral constants or whatever, well, okay, just fetch the values. Now we're um, lowering from type level to constexpr and, and literal values level, okay? Now process into con inside constexpr and just, just uh, return the result. So uh, it works. And uh, I can't use it here, the, the range-based for loop, because unfortunately, uh, std array iterators are not constexpr, but that would be possible. I got a constexpr implementation of array. Um, yes? Yes, yes. Um, the question is, have you, um, have you implemented AND with this technique and benchmarked it? I did. Um, <laughs> it might be in the bonus section at the end of the talk, but it performed worse, a bit worse. Um, because I basically kept like all the techniques and just looked at the, the naive one and then the best one, which is non obvious, right? And so, yes, I did, of course. Um, <laughs> Okay, so, uh, and, and you will also get, oh, but something that's really interesting. No, okay, never mind. No, you don't get short circuiting because you need to, um, to instantiate all the meta functions. So you don't get short circuiting with, with, uh, with like, okay. Um, so this is for um, homogeneous fold. And now I'm gonna show three different, uh, well, uh, benchmark of three different sum implementations, okay? And so the first ones, are implemented using fold, left fold, and this, the, the, the last one are, is implemented in terms of constexpr. So here's the, the thing. The naive one is ugly. The other one is, right, okay. I mean, it's, it's not good, but if, if, if you don't know that you have integral constants, that, that's the best you can do, and it's still much better than this one. Um, and, um, and well, the constexpr version is, is even better. So. Um, Left folds, they're not, they're, it's not the place where we can get the most impressive um, improvement because it's fundamentally recursive. Like this left fold and right fold are, are fundamentally recursive. So um, yeah, we, we can get like the, the best improvement, but it's still not bad. And for the memory usage, again, it's somewhat equivalent. Um, um, it seems that using constexpr has some kind of initial cost. Um, in all the benchmarks I've done, constexpr always starts a bit higher. I'm not sure why. Seriously, I'm not sure why. <coughs> Perhaps the compiler has to do some, maybe someone knows. No? Perhaps the compiler has to do some kind of, well, certainly to, to like do it the constexpr. It has to set up something, I, I guess, and that might be it. I'm not sure. So um, this is for left fold. So we can see that there's still um, improvement. Okay, and now the last one. Um, well, it's not really a technique actually. It's just like we can do better. It's universal template, template params. 
So in C++ tree, you're stuck with a lot of quotes, uh, and it sucks. Um, you have also apply one, apply, uh, apply wrap one, apply wrap two, apply wrap to n, and, and it's not fun. So in C++ 7, of course, no hassle. Simple, right? And there's more. Um, just click on the link, and you'll see it. So uh, like uh, the data sets are there, so you can be sure that I'm not like ripping everybody off. So um, the bench, the data sets are there. Um, there's even like you can generate the data sets with, uh, with the compilers you want. It'll, it'll take a bit of work, but it's possible. Um, and and the, 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 the charts are all generated already, so you don't have to do uh, any work if you just <laughs> want to see pictures, right? And so um, there you get the benchmark for GCC, Clang 3.5, Clang 3.4, uh, Apple LLVM, and whatever uh, I can put my hands on. So, okay. So the MPL is stuck with C++ tree, and we're stuck with it. Um, I think we need something new, but like, what would that, what would that look like? Um, do, do we wanna like copy the, the, the MPL or go with something completely new? Well, it's unclear. I'm gonna try to make, it, uh, make this a bit clearer in the next section. So, let's walk towards the MPL successor. And actually, I've got an MPL successor. I'm just not sure I'm satisfied yet because some options were presented to me <coughs> and we discussed about some things and um, I'll, I'll have to uh, look further into this, but let, let, let's, let's see what's possible. But before we do, let's do a bit of philosophy, right? What is the purpose? <coughs> what is metaprogramming in C++? Anybody? Yeah, it, it's a way of confusing your coworkers. <laughs> it works, yeah. <clears throat> mm. Well, I don't have the answer, actually. Um, and I guess when I have the answer, well, you guys will have a standard library for it. That, 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 that's what I guess, because uh, it's useful, people use it. Um, well, isn't it just as simple as pushing to compile what otherwise you would have to do at run? It's, it's just that, right? Yeah, but just that, but this is, it's this is... Feasible, it's a bit more than that, yeah. because if it doesn't solve problems, the <coughs> API definition that you cannot solve in any other way, because we have to solve to, uh, you know, pack virtual systems of virtual or whatever, and if you place a lot I'm not repeating those, sorry. <laughs> right, right. Um, but I do think <laughs> that we're gonna, that it's gonna be easier for application developers to use metaprogramming with, with like in the incoming, with the with modern C++. I, I think it's gonna be easier. We're gonna work hard for this. Um, anyway, I'll continue. So I don't have a clear cut end to this. What is the purpose of the MPL? Well, <coughs> basically what I'm saying, what, what I'm suggesting by asking those two questions, and, and I do think that these are different questions perhaps, 
I'm saying that MPL might not like be the whole of metaprogramming, and metaprogramming might not be the whole of MPL. So um, the MPL basically just works with types, only types. Um, some types can be made to represent values, but we're really working with types, okay? And, and that's it. And of course, you can go from types to values. The other way around, you can't, and most of the time. Um, because, and I think that's like, fundamentally, that's because um, C++ is not dependently typed. But I, I might be wrong on that. What is the purpose of fusion? Do these overlap in some kind of way? <coughs> well, um, most people that have used both um, have already thought about the fact that like, MPL is kind of the result of namespace, you know, of, of fusion. It, it's, it's kind of the same thing, um, except that you can't, um, you can't use types that can't be, um, uh, you can't use type, types that can't be imp instantiated with fusion uh, because they're gonna need some kind of uh, um, instance of that, of, of that type, object of that type, and it's, it's not gonna work. So you can't say uh, create a vector of, of voids um, in fusion. It, it's gonna say somewhere like, hey, hey, I can't return voids from, void from, uh, from say, uh, or I just can't have a member that's, that, that's of type void. So it, it's not exactly an overlap, but there is still some kind of good overlap. Um, um, so, one of the goals is like to try to see, is it possible to merge Fusion and MPL in some way, or is it not possible? Okay, um, I'll go on with um, orthogonal, or mostly orthogonal design aspects of a metaprogramming library. Um, this is basically what I've been trying to figure out since, for the last <coughs> Now it's, it's more clear. So you'll need some kind of tagging system, okay? Because what we're trying to do is actually re-implement um, a domain-specific language in C++. And so we're re-implementing some kind of classes or, or user-defined types, say vector, say MPL list, MPL map, and MPL int, and so on. So we need some kind of type system, actually. It's really a type system at the type level. And that's what the tagging system of the MPL is. It's just a primitive one, right? So we need some kind of tagging system. And there are a couple of, way, a couple of ways to do that. Basic tags, which is the current MPL. So you get some kind of meta function. Uh, I know, I think the, the, the MPL, if I remember, <coughs> just uses tag, but you guys get the point anyway. Uh, so basic tag, tags, uh, you just specify what's your type and then um, you can fetch that using a meta function. So it's quite simple. And, um, the other way I looked at is data types, which is actually pretty much the same as basic tags, but the feel to it is different. Uh, it feels more, it feels more robust. It, it feels more like um, um, like it's intended to be used. So what you have is a data type, which is really like a, a, a type in normal C++. You consider it as a type in normal C++, and it's accessed using a meta function, just like basic tags. But you can have different constructors, and that's what I call constructors here, for the same data type, okay? Now, this is not the same cons as in the first part of the talk, okay? It could be, cons could be made to be like a, a data constructor also. It could be made to be something similar to vector. S the arguments are just different. You just give it like an element and another list, and well, <coughs> It implements, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the methods the methods that it, it needs to. So, um, uh, this, like I said, this is pretty much the same as um, basic tags, but the feel to it is different because I'm encouraging uh, to have different data constructors, and I'm encouraging the, 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 the to have the view that you're really, uh, really in, inside a full-blown type system. Which is not the fact, in, which is not the case in, in the current MPL, where you, where you just have a tag and it's just used for one purpose, uh, dispatching the meta functions, which I'll, I'll, I'll cover next. Um, but um, like in the MPL, I'm currently considering making, I, I, I consider making uh, data types actually meta function classes that could convert between um, between stuff. So it's just a, it's basically the same thing, but with a 
bit different view. And so from now on, I'll just be considering data because there's some kind of generalization of, of uh, now, a way to tag objects and to say, like, this is the type of my object. Um, we'd like to have operations, like methods or whatever you call them, uh, functions or meta functions, right, that act on these objects, which are really types, right, in the C++ system, but whatever. And um, to do this to customize behavior, you'll need to dispatch the meta functions based on the on the type of your of your object. <coughs> so, perimeter function dispatching. This is what's used in the current MPL. So, you have a meta function that you want you want it to be customizable using data types or tags or whatever. And um, so, you create a basic a base meta function that just um, dispatches to an implementation which is parameterized by the data type of your object. And then you implement whatever you want in, 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 in the, the, the actual meta function, okay? And now here, this is unusual for the MPL, but here I really need to do this because I'm considering data types and not only basic tags. And, some, and an object of this data type can have several different constructors. So this is just a, gen, a small generalization uh, on top of basic tags. So um, everybody's following now? So you're trying to implement polymorphism, polymorphism? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah well, that's the goal. <laughs> so everybody following? Okay. So permit a function dispatching. And so this is the implementation of add. Now if I want to implement tail, same thing. Just the same thing, another tail, ample, and so on. Is empty, and the bunch of them, I just do the same thing. This is, this is what's done in the current MPL. Now, you can also consider type classes. Um, basically, what you do is just bundle meta functions that go well together. You bundle them into, into a single um, uh, it's trouble, yeah. <laughs> um, so you bundle them into a single, what I call type class, what I call people call type class. And um, this allows you to, well, first it's, it's um, more organized, but like this is a rather small argument. But what's really, really nice is that you can provide defaults. Now, if, if, if like your bundle of meta functions, which from now on are called type class, if your type class says, okay, you give me this meta function, you give me that meta function, and I know with these meta functions, I can provide you this other one for free. Well, this, these two meta functions uh, are, we'll call them the, the minimal complete definition. Uh, it's, it's what's required to be implemented to be a model of the, of the type class, you know, to instantiate the type class in SQL language. So uh, we basically bundle them together and we can get default behavior like this, uh, right? It, it's simple. So uh, the iterable, the person who creates the iterable type class, type class, <coughs> just says like, well, if you give me add and if you give me tail and is empty, I can give you these other meta functions, and so you get them for free. Yeah. Yes, but. Um, now, the, the, the comment is, if you use the previous technique, you can still provide defaults. <coughs> without, without that plan. It was just for grouping. I'm pretty sure I didn't know. Really. Okay, well, I mean, this is true. You can, you can also provide defaults with, with per meta function dispatching. Um, and right now it's, honestly, I can't remember why. Um, 
Anyway, um, so okay, let's just say it's better because we group meta functions, and um, eventually uh, I'll document why it's better if there is another reason. But um, still, it's good for grouping meta functions, and it's also nice because you can provide, um, say, you can you, you can say like the, the semantics, but you can also do this with the perimeter function dispatching. Okay, um, but you can provide um, template unit tests for for your type classes. Um, so you can say like iterable. I know that at should be always like if you provide me a way, you, you give me a structure, okay, a constructor. You you say this is an iterable, okay. You tell me how to use your constructor. Now I'm able to test. Uh, I'll be able to test, or approximately, um, for 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 most cases, I'll be able to test whether it works, um, whether it, it, it whether the, your your methods are implemented correctly. And I do it in the MPL eleven. I've got like a couple of iterables and a single very large and very thorough um, unit test that works for all iterables. And and uh, well, this is helpful. Reduces the, the, the number of lines. And um, yeah, so that's it. Now some useful type classes um, that are in in the MPL eleven, but they're they differ from <coughs> from the Haskell type classes. Um, mainly because of implementation difficulties, and also because um, some Haskell type classes only make sense in the context of only make sense in the context of uh, being used with other type classes or with some items that you can really have easily in metaprogramming. So, uh, say the, the use of monads in, in the MPL eleven is really really basic. So I'm not going to provide. Um, 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 type class methods that work with monads because it's just right now it's, it, it, it would it wouldn't be useful for now so they, they, they differ so if you know Haskell don't don't trench um, okay so functor, basically a functor is a structure uh, that um, can be mapped over so you give me a function and I'm going to map it on onto all the elements and I won't go into the theory uh, category theoretical uh, Base of this because it's not, it's not the goal, um, and some people are more qualified than I am to do this. But so basically, it's some it's, it's some kind of structure which you can map over. So fmap is transform in the STL. Foldable, something that can be folded. So a list can be folded. Uh, a tree, some kind of tree can be folded, and there is a lot of different structures that can be folded. Um, and once you are able to fold, uh, and these are the minimal, the, the only meta functions that you need to provide, and then once you're able to fold, <coughs> you're able to, able to provide a lot of meta functions. And actually, there are also well, maximum by <coughs> minimum by, which also ac accept the predicate, uh, or any all none of, which doesn't require a predicate. And so th there's like. A truckload of functions that you can, of meta functions that you can provide when you're able to fold. So, so the goal really is that like you implement a list, you implement fold, say the way I shown in the first part, right, and then you get these for free, and these are actually implemented as um, aliases to to your fold, to your efficient fold. So um, it's really really simple. Um, so these meta functions are. Are implemented in the forward declaration <coughs> header as as aliases, and they're very very light, very very easy to implement. It's it's um, it's somewhat elegant, so it's pretty cool. So foldable is very useful, and then I got iterable, which I think will um, could create some discussion, I think, because of like range stuff uh, from yesterday, and was there's a lot of, of things. Going on with this right now, but um, basically, you give me add tail and is empty, and I can give you. I can I can fetch at any index. Okay, the implementation is, is going to be bad, but it, but still, it's better than nothing, right? Uh, if if you can do it efficiently, then don't go ahead. But I I, I can still give you um, a default implementation. Uh, then I can fetch the last element, drop any number of element, drop with a predicate. And there's other, I can provide, basically with add tail and it is empty, I can provide you also foldable. So we get everything from foldable. Um, and if you gave me, if you were a bit more than that, if you were a monad, I think I would be able to provide 
well, if you were a Muna, then you already have functors, and never mind. Okay. Um, so uh, anyway, um, iterable, and there's more also. Um, and I, I just want to make a small link to the talk of yesterday with Chandler. Um, he ended up his talk talking about uh, you know an iterator <coughs> with some kind of predicate, and he thought that range was somewhat like that. Well, my intuition is that this is th this is equivalent to what he was saying. So Ed is they're, they're referencing the first iterator, the the iterator that you have. Tail is just incrementing the iterator, so you get a way to get everything else, right? You get the tail of the, the list or the, the whatever structure. And is empty, it's just calling the predicate and the iterator. So I think this is actually exactly the same thing as, um, and, 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 it, and it allows you to express, I believe it allows you to express any algorithm um, or, well, most algorithms at least for um, forward sequences. Like for non-random access stuff and non, and non uh, bidirectional stuff, it's, it's like a, the basis for everything. And these are actually implementable. Uh, these can be implemented with fold, with a lazy fold. But it's not necessarily obvious. Um, OK, so these are the sequence-oriented type classes that I wanted to present because um, they're, they're, like very, they're everywhere. And once you get that, well, you're able to re-implement a lot of the MPL. OK, another design aspect that's mostly um, orthogonal to, to the rest is how will algorithms and sequences <coughs> interact um, with each other. Um, so what the is it uses iterators, right? So any algorithm is, is basically just a call to an helper that will use the iterators to do whatever it has to do, OK? Um, and this is really orthogonal because we could still use type classes and have this, um, just that the type classes would be like the, the, the iterator concepts. So it works. Um, not, no, it, it might not be useful, but still it works. So you can use iterators. Um, I'm not really fond of this approach, but oh well. Or you could just use sequence-oriented type classes like I showed, and it does the work. So you just use what, so instead of saying like, hey, give me a two bidirectional iterators or two, two whatever iterators, just, just, just give me whatever, um, an object of whatever type class you need. If, if I need a fold in, inside my algorithm, Okay. Well, the the, co the the question is, um, would you represent, um, say, find, or an algorithm that that, that, that returns a position uh, using sequence-oriented <coughs> algorithms, uh, sequence-oriented type classes? Well, I think you couldn't return a position. I'm pretty sure of that. Well, you can implement find, but it's not going to return uh, an iterator. It's going to return the element or nothing if it doesn't find it. And that would be like head of filter. I don't know about this. Sorry. Zipper is like it, it tells you what, what okay. position oh. you are in. Okay. Like yes. Like, like a zipper for a list is actually two lists. Yeah. Right. With an one index. Is inverted and one is forward. And like you are like in between. I don't get that. Sorry. Perhaps we can have. The, we it's, it's how you can implement bidirectional uh, sequences. Okay, I'm totally unaware of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really, I really want to talk to you about uh, this after. Yeah. It's really interesting. You, you, can, you can even have positions within trees. Three zippers. Well, it's got to be possible some, some way. But yeah, I, I'm not aware of this. Okay, so the, the comment, or anyway, is that uh, they're going to teach me um, how, to <laughs> how to implement more complex uh, bidirectional and uh, stuff in, in with. with, with um, sequence -orient oriented type classes and, and just like pure functional programming. So uh, I look forward to it. Just, 
Um, but you, you could still implement somewhat like find using head filter, but it doesn't return a position, and that was the point. So. Now, this design aspect is the dreadful evaluation strategy. This one. It, it, okay, and I'm going to spend the rest of the talk. I think. Um, what I mean by evaluation strategy is um, more than what we actually mean. Okay, I, I, I put a little bit more into it um, than we usually do. I mean, in, in our context, what I mean is how do you represent meta functions? What does it mean for a meta function to be called, to be evaluated? <coughs> and, and, and that's it. So um, there are many ways to, 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 to do that. Um, and the first way, the, the, the traditional way, is to have strict meta function, um, classic, with, with like a classical implementation. So a meta function is basically a template strict, right? right? Its result is in its uh, colon colon type. And don't look at the code for now. Okay? I can hide it if you want. We're going to see. Anyway, this doesn't work. I'm going to show why it doesn't work. Anyway. Um, so a meta function is a template struct. Its result is the column column type inside. Okay? When you call a meta function, if you want to fetch its result, you say meta f of x column column type. And that's it. Right? And now it leads to uh, fun or not fun stuff like this. Right? Type name everywhere. But whatever. Um, so this is strict with classic meta functions, and I say strict because when you call a meta function, um, you need to evaluate when when you compose meta function, right? You need to evaluate the inner meta function to give it to, to give the second one the result. So, for example, here, in order to say um, to to drop here, well, I have to actually evaluate minus to give it to drop, OK? So it's strict, because the, uh, the, um, this one, which is actually an argument to drop, is evaluated regardless of whether drop needs it or not. And it's evaluated even like before drop is, is before we enter into drop. So I'll say that it's strict. Of course, um, there's a lot of like subtleties with uh, uh, evaluation strategies, so I'm going really bold right now, but uh, say that this is strict and classic meta functions because they are template strict with a current current type. So you are passing by that. Yes, that's it. You first evaluate and then you pass. Yes. 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 Now, um, yeah, okay. Let's, let's look at the implementation. My goal is to implement some kind of, oh, uh, yeah. So the um, comment was that essentially your um, what, what, what I call strict with cla strictness is actually um, passing by value, and that's true. Yeah. Okay. The implementation. I'm trying to implement a naive drop algorithm. Um, it won't work because um, if the sequence is empty, right? Here, I'm fetching the tail, and it doesn't work. Okay. So um, this just doesn't work. I would have to use, well, I could use eval if, right? And then drop without the type name column column type. But oh, wait, it still doesn't work. Because, because we're passing by value, we need to, to um, instantiate here. We need to evaluate its argument regardless of which branch is taken in the eval if. So it still doesn't work. And this is like a major pain when you're Metaprogramming and like I see people, yes, it is. I mean, every time every time I want to branch, and have one or or two of the branches which are actually meta function compositions, I need to. I have two solutions: create a new struct, which is equivalent to rewriting the branching yourself. Okay, so screw if anyway. Um, this or use a lambda construct, some something like um, eval if whatever condition, okay. apply lambda, your lazy thing, the arguments. Otherwise, apply lambda, your other lazy thing, and the arguments. And now, because lambda creates laziness, it works. But it's, it's, it's just, I think it's stupid to do that. Uh, I think we sh it should be possible to do it differently. 
I, I would like to anyway. So we'd have to implement it that way or anything that's like equivalent. So I'm basically, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just rewriting the, the branching logic um, in, in, in into the meta function. So, uh, and we'd like to avoid that. So everybody's following right now. Just wanna make sure. Okay, great. Now it's possible <coughs> to, um, to go for a laziness. And what I mean by that is that um, all meta functions are basically eval underscore something. They're, they're, they're just transformed into their eval underscore equivalent. Um, so if here is actually eval if, right? Or, well, the current MPL or is already lazy, so okay, it's, equ it's equivalent. Equal, it will evaluate, this is supposed to be a meta function, it's gonna be evaluated. Uh, same here, well, int, we're lucky or not, whatever, but um, it, it's defined to be a meta function in their current MPL. And so uh, we can do our stuff, and since none of this is evaluated, because drop is actually the one that's gonna evaluate it, right? We can write this, and this works. So a couple of benefits here. First, it's more legible, it's shorter. You can have an actual if that works, like, that, that does something that, that's helpful, right? Um, and, um, and, and yeah, that's it. And so uh, why is this really like necessary to implement this kind of thing? Or I think it's necessary at least. It's because you're, like I said, we're creating a small DSL and we're trying to um, implement a new control flow construct. And to control the flow of operation in the program, you need to be able to, to control when are the uh, expressions evaluated? And strictness doesn't allow you, doesn't give, the, give you that control. Laziness gives you that control. Perhaps there are other techniques that give you also that, that control. Laziness is one that gives you that. You decide when you, impl you, you, you evaluate your stuff. So um, that's it. it. It's also laziness, it's also very powerful when used in conjunction, conjunction with uh, some meta functions like a right fold because of the structure of of rightful, but I don't have time to go uh, through this right now. But like the, the 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 main reason why I was able to provide so much using foldable earlier, like I said, maximum, any, and stuff like that, is because of the lazy rightful. This one is really really useful. It needs to be lazy though, so I can sh short circuit and do stuff. So it, it it's powerful, and uh, then using laziness whenever you write a naive algorithm, it becomes equivalent to a view in the current MPL without hassle. You just write a meta function, and it's a view in the, in, the, in the current MPL. Whereas in the current MPL, you have to implement a view, and then, okay, well, a view needs iterators. So we're on for some fun, right? Um, let's implement the iterators for that view. Now you just write a meta function and behave. Uh, it was criticized, people said, you would get like very bad performance. And it's true that there are pathological cases. It's true, like Fibonacci. You, you don't wanna implement Fibonacci that way because, um, because it's some kind of uh, you know, dynamic, um, dynamic programming thing. And then the, um, because of laziness, they're all gonna be different templates. And it's like awful. But just don't do it. There, there are some algorithms that, um, that, that are not well meant to be, that are not meant to be written that way. And to, in that case, you have a lazy meta function inside, you drop into const expert, do Fibonacci super fast, and then come back with a result. That's what I would do. Like, I, I wouldn't try to implement Fibonacci using laziness. That, that would be complete, complete to me. So that's it, and still classic meta functions because I'm still using template strict. Now, strict with new style meta functions, and that is the, like, the, the wave that blew me away just before the conference um, is because I think it, okay, uh, basically we implement, we would implement meta functions as, as context per functions, okay, and using some kind of wrapper to make sure that um, nasty types don't cause problem, like I said with Fusion earlier, okay. We use some kind of wrapper for those types, and um, then the MPL would be, would be implemented by do whatever you want, with context per functions, then called decal type. Eventually, 
unwrap the nasty type that's inside that, that's in there, okay? And you, you got whatever you got what you need. And so that would be equivalent to the MPL. Uh, no, I, you're looking like that. It's not going to work, okay? Because it's not lazy. It's not going to work. I'm coming to that. But then, um, okay. And I think with this, we're able to um, to replace Fusion as well. And that would be really nice to have a single metaprogramming library. Yep. So here, the double equals is overloaded and it returns a type, different type. type. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the goal, and that's why I think that's. I think that's why Dave Abrams wasn't able to sort, um, like two two or three years ago, he wasn't able to sort um, heterogeneous data because he wasn't carrying the type around. I think that's the, that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, the comment was just uh, like, um, so equal here is um, well. Equal equal returns a different type, right? It's over. It's um, it's um, it's implemented that way. So for uh, int underscore something, it, it will re return a bool <coughs> underscore something, okay? And so, um, this is great, but it doesn't work because if well, basically we're back to the same problem as before with struct. We don't have laziness, and so this is evaluated, and it breaks, and well, this one is evaluated too, but whatever. So unfortunately, we need to do some kind of thing like that. So uh, this is really equivalent to what I showed earlier. I'm basically rewriting the branching. Uh, I have to put this drop impl below because it needs to see drop or, so anyway, it's just really an implementation trick. Um, but so this is the other way of implementing meta functions I'm currently um, looking at. Um, I fear, though, that for this to be useful, we need to re-implement uh, context for Phoenix to be able to have lazy branches. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'd, I'd like to talk to you uh, after the talk. Um, great. It's going to be instantiated, right? It will be instantiated if you pass the ADL. Yeah. So it actually ends up being a lot more verbose than the initial ADL. I know. A lot of okay. So, so the comment is, and I'll go fast, but um, um, it's because I'm using ADL because it's, un no, because I'm using an unqualified call here, uh, ADL kicks in, and when ADL kicks in, nasty stuff can happen, such as um, this is going to be some template expression, this is going to be some template expression. Well, the types inside the, the, the angry brackets of those, of, of those expressions can be uh, evaluated. And I, I know, uh, actually, I ran into this problem uh, a couple of days ago. Um, and using a qualified uh, calling worked. Yeah, um, but by the way, by the way, like this is overly simplified. I mean, this is just because I want I want it to fit in the slides. But this this is uh, this is not how it will be implemented. Uh, I got a mini MPL actually that uses this this paradigm, and it's not implemented as a three function or one of of the versions is not. Okay, so now uh, consider designs, which is basically what we're here for. Um, what did I do during the past year, right? Oh, uh, no, this is not what I want. OK, this one. Sorry about that. OK. <laughs> there. You know, I, I love reveal the GS, that, but uh, sometimes it, it, whew, it's a bit mixing up. So um, I did a fitful re-implementation re of the MPL um, up to December. Then I scratch it up completely. I just deleted. 
Um, well, no, okay, it, it's still in the source control. You get, you get uh, the, the ID. Uh, so basic tagging, perimeter function dispatching, uh, iterator-based algorithm interaction, and strict plus classic evaluation. I don't like iterators. They're a pain to implement. They don't have any, any, in the MPL, they just don't have any gain. Actually, they're a loss because we're purely functional. We have to carry the sequence type everywhere. So it's just, it's just a twisted way to do it in the MPL. Um, they make it harder. They, 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 they don't make it easier in any way to, um, to, to, to program, or at least not in my experience, and I'd like to hear otherwise maybe. But, so fitful MPL re-implementation. Um, of course, you get the performance gains uh, of the new techniques, but still um, an API that doesn't cut it, not for me anyway. Now, Escalish MPL, which is the MPL 11 as it stands right now. Uh, data types, type classes, laziness plus uh, uh, classic meta functions. And um, well, that's it. So I, I really pr presented like what's the, my goal was to be able to, to present what I've done and, uh, and what's the current MPL 11. So it's really like those design aspects that were orthogonal, well, you mix them up and it gives you the MPL 11. Um, And then the last one, which uses the, the new or perhaps, well, the, the, the new metafunction paradigm that I'm considering. Um, this is data types, type classes, and strict plus new style. We'll have to see how, how that works. Uh, I guess I'll do this, uh, this uh, like at the beginning of the summer. I'll talk with my mentor for Google Summer of Code. Um, but that, yeah, well, that would be nice. So I tried them, and here's a comparison. Um, so meta function mapping in the three different in the three different uh, implementations. So MPL is just transform, blah blah blah, right? Uh, MPL eleven, fmap, same thing for the context perversion, and this code like it's like, it's really like that that you use it. Okay. Um, now for the time, this is the MPL. Um, this is the blue one here. Can, can you guys see clearly? Or yeah, the blue one here is the MPL eleven, using like some all, all sorts of nasty tricks uh, to optimize. Um, and there are two curves here that overlap. Okay, just disregard it. Just s do as if it was just a single curve, and it's using context expert. So like there's a very very small penalty, and if that was a better design, I'd personally go for it. Definitely, because this is not like 0, 0.00 something second. I, I think we don't really care. Uh, yep. Yes, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Uh, the question was: It looks like for very small values, they actually invert uh, about 100. Uh, yeah, they do invert, and so th that will actually be something to consider because, like, most of the time we're only folding on small data sets anyway. So th this totally is to consider. Um, right, memory usage, about the same thing, okay? Same. Now, um, MPL, MPL 11, const expert, time, okay. There's a bunch of stuff here, right? Okay, okay, I'll explain. So, MPL 11 here, okay? Um, pretty okay. PL vector. Can you guys see? The color is, is quite pale, but MPL vector. And like I said, it's advertised as being like efficient. It's, it's not at all. So MPL vector. MPL list, which is very, very efficient. Actually, see? It's basically the same thing. Um, there, is, there is like a constant translation because including this monster is horrible. But once it's included, the algorithm is very well implemented. So, right? Um, yep. And, uh, so this is implementation in the MPL, which we can see in the MPL 11, I mean, which we can see performs worse than, than, uh, than the MPL. A naive implementation of a left fold is actually worse than the current MPL list fold, right? And finally, 
the uh, context profile, which is well basically the same as a naive as a naive one. And the reason I put the naive one here is just to show that um, the reason why why the MPL eleven optimized left fold performs well is because I do some kind of tricks with unrolling and and so on. But I think it would be possible to do the same kinds of trick with Constexper and to lower this curve like that. And that's why I put the comparison to show that I don't think it's inherent to the fact that it's Constexper that it's really slower. Yes. 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 Actually. The, um, yes. Exactly. The, the, the compiler just is when the when the lines end. And oh yes, and the reason why I can get up to like 100 and something uh, with vector and list, and actually with a thousand and list, it's because um, the benchmark are generated. I use the internal representation of list, which is some kind of MPL, M, yeah, MPL underscore uh, um, item something. Well, I create this using a Ruby uh, whatever templates, and uh, it allows me to like to benchmark more. But actually, to get this, you need to push front on the MPL list a thousand. L well, actually, um, 980 elements, because the, the maximum number of, of elements you can put in the list is 20, right? So, um, so yeah, this is I, I'm being really nice to them, really, really. really uh, okay, so um, I think that with proper optimizations, Transexpert could perform pretty well. I'll have to investigate. Memory usage, same thing. And now let's be a bit indecent, right? This is the last one, including. So, what do these preprocessor trick actual actually do to the, to the compilation time? Well, with GCC 4.9, including the MPL, the whole MPL is 8.2 seconds. That's a lot of time, a lot of time, okay? Uh, the MPL eleven is 0 0.09, and I provide a minified editor, okay? With like um, most spaces removed, comments removed, all the, the library in a single editor. Actually, it's on a single line, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's true. Okay, and, and so the, the goal was twofold. The goal, the, the goal for this minified version was to see, hey, is it possible to do like, well, okay, let's do like JavaScript people, you know, provide a minified version. Let's optimize uh, to, to the top of it. Um, first goal, and the second goal was, uh, I want the library to be tried by, by a lot of people. It's possible to, to try the MPL 11 you, by including just a single header. Just basically go to my GitHub repository, okay? Then you copy paste the header in your project. You try it. If you don't like it, just just delete it. No problem. Otherwise, well, you're good to go. And so um, you can you can benefit from actually all the more more efficient implementations just by using this. But but do read the tutorial because you'll you'll get bitten. Yep. You must encode all of the identifiers. No, I no 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 no. What do the error messages look like? Sorry. What do the error messages look like? Error on line one. Um, um, yeah, well, actually, I think uh, the question was, what do error messages uh, look like with the minified version? Well, uh, it's probably horrible, but the, the, the point is, the point is, uh, like, develop with, um, develop with uh, the non-minified version, and then swap for the, for, for, for the minified version. Um, yep. <laughs> I haven't. No, I haven't. But anyway, you can see that they're, they're like the minified version versus the non-minified version. There, there's only a small. It's about it's about twelve. Um, I think it's about twelve. Uh, anyway, so it, 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 there's there's only a small difference. Right? For the MPL. Okay. Yeah, that's true. I guess I should do that. Yeah. I guess I should do, do that differently. Um, okay, and so the speed up over the MPL is quite, is, is like, <laughs> woo! Okay? Yeah, because these are small numbers, so into that one, right? So, uh, large speed up, now with Clang 3.5. Uh, here, here's the speed up. Well, it's, it's more reasonable, but still, I mean, that's a big speed up. And this means, concretely, this means that, like, you're done with writing infinite 
list of includes with the MPL. Like you just have to include one header and you get everything you want. That I, I think I think that's pretty cool. I was mad tired of like sorting with my editor, sorting the lines of includes and making sure, okay, am I missing any include? What the hell? No, no, just, just like include large components. And I think that's, anyway, I think that's just a, a better, maybe a better design for this. Okay, and um, I'm on one, so the roadmap first. Um, I wanna finish uh, exploring the design space during the Google Summer of Code. Uh, hopefully um, propose a boost library by the end of the summer, um, if that works out well. And as some people suggested, perhaps we even that would be nice. Uh, if we get a, a solution that's, that's good enough, uh, and after uh, trying it in the re real world for, for, for a bit of time, then maybe this 10 C++. So thank you. <laughs>